one right into the four point zone. They've definitely been tuning that shot to get the most points. And here goes caution tape, stacking him up in that green zone. Center of the field, they're gonna get as many of those discs into the four point zone as they can. We do caution tape alpha. Just piling those discs up. Look at the pile of discs in that four point scoring zone. Hello, uh, I mean, my name is Daniel from Team 89 Z. And my name is Matt from Team 89A. From we are the following. <laughs> How my robot works is that it dumps a bunch of discs into a big storage compartment and has an, it has an indexer at the bottom. This indexer uses a conveyor mechanism to index the discs into the flywheel and shoots it out into the full point. So the reason my, my shooting mechanism is better than Dan's shooting mechanism is because it's a lot more direct route to the flywheel, which means I can shoot a lot quicker than he can. Uh, mine and takes it on, on the hack part and flips the disc. Copyright of the hero bot. Uh, th the problem with Matt's uh, indexer is that it only shoots two discs at a time, uh, which can lead to inconsistency. <laughs> uh, while mine shoots out one disc at a time, which, uh, which is a lot more uh, consistent than his. Uh, so basically how uh, my Oh, the Spencer mechanism works is that it has a, uh, a one to three ratio uh, that spins a haft uh, and that goes up all the way across into our uh, Oh, Spencer. Uh, so basically, uh, so this, but this what dump the disc into our a robot. Uh, I would, a reason why this is a lot more uh, consistent than Matt is that it has such a big margin of error, um, but that can help in both in driving uh, plus autonomous code. Just to let you know, our autonomous was much better than yours. But I was so for our blue dispenser, uh, we have a four bar mechanism that lifts the rope uh, the far up and down to be able to pull down the blue dispenser. We have a little hook that attaches onto the front. Uh, when the discs first enter the robot, they go into this top storage area and then we can lift this arm to let the disc go into the robot. The reason why this is much better than their robot design is because we have better disc control and we can store discs at the top. And also this is a lot shorter than their robot mechanism so you can have a bigger um, storage area to contain more discs. So for my yellow dispenser, um, by the time we went to try to do yellow dispenser, we didn't have any motors left. So we need to be able to do some motor share. So we're using a string to connect uh, the blue dispenser to the yellow dispenser. As you can see, there's a string. Um, so once this goes up, the blue dispenser also goes up. It's basically like a third bar in the four bar mechanism. Uh, we have this um, standoff here attached to the inside lip of the uh, yellow dispenser. And then when we drive away, the disc will fall right into this, specifically the specific width of this yellow dispenser tray. The reason why mine is much better than Dan's is because mine is a lot quicker because we're driving it and it's not a macro driving it. And it's a lot more consistent because theirs may not work on every single field if the yellow dispenser is really tight. Basically, uh, uh, how um, yes. mine works uh, uh, is that uh, a post function mechanism holder uh, is attached to a pulley uh, and a string. Uh, so basically, uh, once we uh, uh, collect all uh, of our discs from the yellow dispenser, uh, we just move it um, all the way up uh, to dump it into our robot. Why uh, this way is a lot better than uh, Matt's way is that since we have a a hack roll. Once you press one button, uh, uh, the entire thing just gets uh, a dispense. Our uh, uh, expansion uh, is basically uh, also linked to our pole dispenser um, holder. Uh, uh, there's a pulley that has a string uh, uh, that goes from here uh, all the way around uh, and goes to this hatch. Uh, once this latch is pulled out, 
at the extension arm uh, I'll extend outwards uh, so basically uh, how it works is that at the pull the puncher arm I'll go up all the way out and extend uh, my blue uh, expansion also uses do the same concept where the blue dispenser will go up and release this latch and then the end game will fire at it. However, mine is much more direct because his goes all the way around and mine only needs to go up a certain amount while his needs to go all the way from up here all the way down to all the way this side. Uh, both of our teams designed a plastic sheet to allow us to, to change um, expansion zones really easily. However, both of our teams used it. So both of our robots use a flywheel to be able to shoot discs at the beginning of the season both of our teams were only using one motor to power the flywheel in order to save the motor for another mechanism however we quickly found out that in order to improve consistency and accuracy with our shooting which was our number one concern we wanted to be able to shoot with two motors uh, after looking on YouTube we saw that a lot of teams use a motor powering this side of the flywheel and a motor powering this side of the flywheel. However, the problem with that was that there's friction on both sides that are equal, so two times the amount of friction. However, so what we did was we put two motors on one side. We have one motor here that's basically powering the whole um, gearbox. So if we take this motor out, this motor is able to power this. So this is the gear. Um, however, we have this motor that has another gear that's attached to this one, so they're both spinning this entire gearbox to be able to spin the one. A problem uh, that we had was that our socket would hobble a lot, which would slow down our flywheel. Uh, so basically, uh, what we did to stop this is that uh, we added a toe by two with some standoffs, uh, and I was going to basically stop that problem. Finally, what made us win championships was our unique um, air shooting design. This design allows us to be able to shoot discs over uh, other discs. However, this um, needed a lot of refinement and testing. So, our first idea of this design was during a competition where his robot was at a United States Battle by the Beach signature event where the field was raised just a bit and discs would hit that little edge and bounce over and land on top of each other. It was a very good score and we thought that it was uh, it could be a very great opportunity. We started making this after our provincial championships. It started off as a ramp on the uh, that pegged onto the field and we just shot discs over that ramp. And we thought that it was pretty efficient and and it worked pretty well so we began trying to find different ways to be able to form a curve however we still need to be able to um stay within constraints we're allowed to go underneath the bar but we cannot pass the black line or we will be disqualified so we have to make sure that it did not pass that great that black line uh the our design is that we use a piece uh that connects to a bar so without uh so this can pivot a whole 360 degrees and we use a shaft to be able to specifically choose a hole in which this is tilted up so it's a perfect tilt to allow discs to um slot and this is being tested a lot uh one of the main issues however was that um, the variance of the fields, meaning that uh, sometimes the fields would be warped a bit, so that they would be going up. So that discs, when we were on that field, the discs would hit the top bar and wouldn't fly. So we have a pulley wheel that would push slightly, push the gray PVC pipe up to allow for a, a bigger margin of error. Now, <laughs> I'll show you how well it works. <laughs> 